our joy is restored in your presence as we worship you. Trust in you, oh Lord. Our faith cannot be shaken. Nothing can separate us. The Lord is with us. The Lord is with God us. Is for us. Our God is for us. Yes. He will never fail. The Lord is with us. Oh, yeah. The Lord is with us. Our God is, Our God is for us. He will never, he will never fail. Ah, yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah. Never. 
fall when fear is calm still you're calling me when faith is lost and my hope exhausted you will be my strength when my mind says I'm Welcome to CWC Bay Area Online. We thank you for joining us today. Today, we'll have an awesome time of worship with the Katinas and hear a powerful word from Pastor Dan. This week, we wanna wish a happy birthday to Paul Vega, Sherry Norman, Pastor T. Lapisi, and my dad, David Rodriguez. Happy birthday. As we continue to be the church, we continue to trust the Lord in our tithes and offerings. We have three ways for you to give. You can text to give, you can give online, or you can mail it to the church. This helps services like these to continue reaching people. Thank you for your continued faithfulness. All right, we're about to start. Share this video with your friends and family to join us. Now let's get ready to worship. Hello, we're the Katinas. It's so good to worship with you all, CWC Bay Area. Our dear friends, Pastor Dan and our sister Angie, thanks for having us. Mm -hmm. And uh, as we come into your homes, Let's worship together. Every breath that I take, every breath that I take. 
confidence that we have toward him that if we ask anything according to his will he hears us Yeah. 
gets us to a place of freedom. Come on, we worship with us. You were the word at the beginning. One with God the Lord most high. You hid in glory in creation. Now revealed in what a beautiful name it is, what a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ my King. What a beautiful name it is, nothing compares to this, what a beautiful name it is, the name of
blessing it's been for us to come into your home and worship with you today. If you don't know, us five are brothers, and God has been so good to our family. Over 40 years ago, our dad was an alcoholic. He was abusive. People thought there was no hope for Moses Katina until he heard about this man named Jesus. Literally, Jesus came into our father's heart and our home, and he changed our dad. He freed him from a life of alcoholism and abuse. And today, our dad is a minister of the gospel of Jesus. I don't know what you're going through, what your family has experienced, but we know this, like the words of this song say, whoever you are, wherever you've been, it don't matter to him. This is love. Jesus is love. Turn around. Come on home. or young adults at risk, we have a great job opportunity for you. New Hope for Youth works with gang-involved youth from the ages of 12 to 25 years old. This is a paid position and we are looking for men and women who have a heart for the broken. Please call Philip Rodriguez for more information. 
Thank you all who came to our live parking lot service last week. It was an amazing time. Stay tuned for our next live parking lot service in upcoming weeks. But for now, keep watching us on YouTube and Facebook. And that's it for now. We hope you have an amazing time here with us at CWC Bay Area. I'm Oni and you're watching Connect. I want to welcome everybody this morning to our live stream. Thank you so much for joining us this morning, and thank you for being faithful to join us every single week. It is such a pleasure to have you with us. You know, I want to just say thank you to the Katinas for leading us in a time of worship. Wasn't it a great time, a time to get in touch with God, to get in tune with God, right there in your living room or right there in the parking lot? They have such an, an anointing on their life, and they do such a great job. So to, to the Katinas, Thank you so much for being with us this morning. You know, as we get ready to collect our tithe and offering, I want to read out of Romans chapter 8, verse 28. The Bible says this, And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to his purpose. You see, giving first starts with a sincere love for God. But it doesn't stop at a sincere love for God. Because we know that God takes all things and he works it together for our good. You see, that's good news for you and I today because that means whatever we're facing, as we put God first, God takes care of every single one of our needs, even the ones that you might have felt he forgot about. God takes care of it. So this morning, as we get ready to make our declaration, know that he makes all things work together. Yes, all things. Let's hold our tithe high up in the air and let's make our declaration loud and proud this morning. Would you say it with me? This is my tithe. With it, I give God my best. I activate my God covenant with my first fruits. I expect checks in the mail, refunds and rebates, promotions at work, healing in my body, bonuses and blessings. Blessings cometh unto me now. Let's pray this morning. Father, we are so thankful, God, that you take what seems to be impossible, Lord, and you make it work together for our good, and you do it out of love. So we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. It is such a pleasure to have you with us this morning. And as Pastor Nick mentioned earlier, we just want to say thank you once again to the Katinas. They're such an anointed group of young men that uh, just totally bless our hearts. And to them, I also want to say thank you because you guys helped me and my wife out there during a very difficult season of our life when we lost our daughter to leukemia. Your song, On the Other Side, was uh, such a, a, a point of hope and encouragement for us and thank you so much for being with us for leading us in worship this morning i also want to say to those of you that were with us last week for our parking lot service live what a phenomenal time man i I'm, i just uh, thinking about it just just brings joy to my heart we had so many people out uh, had a couple hundred people come out and just worship exalt the name of god and to be able to preach to live people instead of a camera was such a blessing for me personally to be able to actually get feedback and to see your faces and to worship with you guys. We're going to be doing it again shortly, and uh, we look forward to it. But today, we're starting a new series. We're starting a new series called Jesus is Still. Everyone say still. In fact, when, when we started this series and started getting prepared for it, what one of our, our staff members asked me, said, wouldn't would it be easier just to say Jesus is? And I shared with them, no, it's Jesus is still and then blank. Why? Because we, in this moment, in this time, people need to know that Jesus is still with us, that Jesus is still on the throne, that Jesus is still God in, this, in the midst of everything that's going on. If you have your Bibles, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8, the, the writer of the book of Hebrews says this, and you know, the 
There's no author to the book of Hebrews. To this day, Christian theologians try to identify who's the author. I personally believe it was Paul. But the author of the book of Hebrews says this in Hebrews 13, verse 8. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Come on, say that with me. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Bow your heads as we pray. Father, help in Jesus' name. Amen. You see, I want you to understand that what we are going through right in this time, the one word I hear everyone talk about is unprecedented, that we are going through an unprecedented time in our nation and in our world. At no other time have we had in our history a, a virus shut down the world the way coronavirus has as well. We are in unprecedented times, and the word unprecedented literally means never done or known before, that this pandemic, the social discord, the racial uh, divide, the political uh, unrest that's going on. Times may have changed, but I want to encourage you today. God doesn't. Although ages may change, my God doesn't change. In fact, this year, I turned 55 years old. Yeah, that's, uh, that, that's a shock to me when I think about it. 55. I was born in 19. 65 and this year I celebrate 55 years on this earth but as I was looking back to the the year that I was born check this out the, when, when I was born the Dow Jones industrial average was 969 points it's over 26,000 points today. The average cost of a new home was $13,000. The average income was $6,400. A gallon of gas was 31 cents. Come on, somebody. The average cost of a new car was $2,600. A loaf of bread cost 21 cents. Listen, check this out. The average rent was $118. $118. In 1965, the Vietnam conflict was going on as well. It was during that time we also had the Watts riots, and it was in 65 that Dr. King led the march in Selma. I, I want you to understand something. Times may have changed, but we're still facing a lot of the same issues. Here we are, 55 years later in the time that I was born, we're still facing a lot of the same social unrest, political divide, economic crisis that we faced then. See, as much as things change, things still remain the same. I need you to understand technology has changed. We have cell phones now, televisions in our day used to have that big tube television. And for those of you that, might, uh, that are a little older like me, we only had three television stations. You remember that? And at night, at midnight, the television station would go offline and you would just hear the, the national anthem and then this little screen come up and a beeping sound. You only had three channels or if you were lucky, you had UHF and then you had the ability to change that little tube. Every You had two little channels on your television back then and you had uh, rabbit ears as well to try to touch and try to move them to capture whatever signal was out there now we have cable now we have fiber optics now things we have flat screen TVs so much has changed because everything changes but I want you to know as much as everything changes God is still the same come on somebody Jesus is the same yesterday today and forever. And this morning, I want to talk to you that Jesus is still the resurrection and the life. Come on. In the midst of coronavirus and lives being lost, and they were expecting unprecedented numbers, and I know that there's some out there that you have lost some loved ones. There's many of us that have gone through some t crisis as we've, we've said goodbye to people that have passed away, whether it was from cancer, diabetes, or other issues. We have seen people go. We have lost loved ones. and it's In the midst of losing someone, I need you to understand that Jesus is is still, come on, someone say still. still. He is still the resurrection and the life. But when we talk about life, what really is life? In fact, right now, people, immigrants from all other countries are coming to the United States in search of a better life. 
But what is life? Life is more than just success or having more economic opportunities. Life is more than just looking for a better house, a better job, a better career. My grandparents came. My, my dad's parents came from Mexico in search of a better life. My parents, my, my mom's parents came from Puerto Rico in search of a better life here in the United States. But I want you to know that life is more than that. In fact, in the Bible, the word life is Zoe, and it's also Zonta. And that word Zoe or Zonta literally gives the idea of this to live or to be among the living, to be alive, not to be lifeless, not to be dead. But when we talk about Zoe life or Zonta life, we're not talking about having a pulse. Everyone, just put your fingers on your neck. You can feel your pulse or you put it on your wrist. They check for a pulse. When doctors come after or, or paramedics come after someone faints or someone goes down, they search for a pulse. They need to make sure to find out a pulse is evidence that you're alive. But I came here to tell you this morning that my God is not a God that just gives you a pulse. My God is gives you Zoe life. What is Zoe life or Zonta life? Zoe life is to the Greek life referred not just to quantity of life, but to the quality of your life as well. That God wants to bring you better life all the way around. In fact, the story we're going to read right now is about a man by the name of Lazarus. Everyone say Lazarus. Lazarus, along with his sisters, were good friends of Jesus. They were, they were tight. Outside of Jesus' family, it seems like Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, they, these guys were, they, they, they were partners. They were homies. They were tight. They were family. They were close-knit. Outside of the disciples and his family, this is where Jesus went to rest. This is where Jesus found comfort. He could put up his feet. He could relax whenever he got around Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. But then something happened. Happens. Lazarus gets sick, and I want you to know how close were they to Jesus that when they find out that Lazarus is on the verge of death, they send a note to Jesus and they simply say this, the one you love is sick. They, they don't go with Lazarus, you know, your, your, your partner, your friend, the one that did this, the one that did that. They didn't plead with him. They didn't beg with him. All they said is the one you love is sick, knowing that Jesus would be able to identify the one he loves with Lazarus. That's what kind of relationship they had with him. Come on, somebody. That he loved Lazarus so much that all they had to say is the one you love is sick. And yet you know the story. Instead of leaving immediately, Jesus waits. And as he waits, in fact, if you take a look at the timeline, by the time Jesus does get there, Lazarus has been dead four days, which tells me this. It took him two days to get there when he finally left. He waited two days. It took him two days to get there. That tells me this. Even if Jesus had left immediately after getting the message, he still wouldn't have gotten there in time. Lazarus would have still died. So Jesus waits a couple days, but there's a purpose for that that I want you to see. When he finally gets there, he has a conversation with Martha because Mary is so hurt that Jesus doesn't show up. It's only Martha that comes out to greet him. And when Martha comes out, says, if you had only been here, my brother would not have died. And Jesus tells her, he will resurrect again. He will rise again. And she says, yeah, I know that on the resurrection day, he will rise. And Jesus responds to her in verse 25 of John chapter 11. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. Did you catch that? Even after dying. When Jesus finally gets there, Lazarus is dead. And I want you to notice this in verse 4. In verse 4 it says, when Jesus heard about it, he says, Lazarus' sickness will not end in death. See, God always knows the end from the beginning. Whatever you're going through right now, it might seem like it's the end. It may seem like your marriage is dying. It may seem like your kids or your family's dying. It may seem like your dreams are dying or your family is dying. Your finances are dying. It may feel like your career is falling apart. But I'm here to tell you that you may think the end is coming. My God sees the end from the beginning. 
He says this thing, this sickness will not end in death. No, it happened for, check this out, the glory of God so that the Son of God will receive glory from this. Oh, come on. I need you to understand that what you're going through right now, God is going to get glory out of it, out of your financial struggle, out of your family struggle, out of your marital struggle. God is going to get some glory out of this. Don't give up. Don't give in. I need you to understand Jesus is still the resurrection and the life. See, I need you to understand something. Mary and Martha and Lazarus didn't do anything wrong. And yet they sent with, 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 with the right conscience, right motivation, Jesus, the one you love is sick. And Jesus doesn't show up. Have you ever prayed a sincere prayer and asked God to show up and you needed God to move by Tuesday and he doesn't show up until Saturday? And you begin to wonder, God, I expected you to show up and you didn't even show up. I want you to understand that when God doesn't show up and when you expect him to, it's because he's about to do something that's going to bring him glory and it's going to bring you out in the process as well. In fact, he tells the disciples when they say, you know, are, 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 what's, what's going on with Lazarus? He says, I'm glad, verse 15, I'm glad for your sakes. And for your sakes, I'm glad I wasn't there. For now, you will really believe and come and let's go see him. He was saying this, listen, you know me as a good teacher. You know me as a healer, but you don't know me as the resurrection and the life. I'm about to go down and do something, but this isn't for Lazarus. This isn't for Mary and this isn't for Martha. What I'm about to do is for the disciples. God was about to teach a lesson to the disciples, yet he was using Mary and Martha and Lazarus as the method, as the methodology, as the tool to bring about this thing. Listen to me carefully. Some of you are in the middle of a problem right now, and you're thinking, God, I didn't do anything wrong. I thought you loved me. I thought you cared about me. And you're wondering, God, why am I in the middle of this storm, in the middle of this trial? God, where are you? The problem isn't for you. God is about to use your situation to bring about his glory and he's taking people to another level the disciples knew him as a teacher but they didn't know and they knew him as a healer but they didn't know him as a resurrection in the life Mary and Martha are, don't even mention that it's Lazarus they got caught up in a teaching moment they get caught up in a struggle that God is using to teach the disciples, a lesson. And Mary's discouraged. Now, now, if you read the story, I'm not going to take time to go through the whole story. But when Jesus finally shows up, Martha runs out to meet him, but Mary doesn't go. She's ticked. She's discouraged. She's disappointed. I, I thought you loved me. Have you ever been disappointed in God? Come on, church. Have you ever been in a point in your life where you felt let down by God? That God, I thought we were closer than this. I thought we were buddies. I thought we were tied. I thought you loved me. The one you love is sick and you don't show up. And not only do you not show up, you show up late. I heard through the rumor, I read on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter that you took two more days. You hung out in that city. You didn't even come to see me. And now you finally show up four days later and now you want to show up and give me consolation? I thought you loved me. You see, whenever we go through a rough time, the first thing we begin to do is question the character of God. Don't you ever question God's love for you. He went through extreme lengths to show his love for you. That if you're caught in a teaching moment, don't miss the lesson. You see, Mary was the one that sat at Jesus' feet. Remember, while Martha was cooking dinner, she wanted to hear his voice. She wanted to hear what he had to say. She didn't want to leave his side. And now she won't even get up to go meet him. When Martha gets out there, Martha is disappointed because Jesus delayed. She says, if you had only been here. If you had just been here, we wouldn't be facing this situation. 
But I love what happens here. She feels let down. She feels discouraged. She's going through that time, and she's wondering, where were you? Have you ever asked God, where, are, where were you? Where were you when I was going through this marital, when I was going through this divorce? Where were you when my child was sick? Where were you when I was going through this battle? God, where are you? Every one of us has gone through a season in our life, and if you haven't yet, baby, you're going to go through that time or one time or another. You're going to go through a time and wonder, God, where are you? But I love what Jesus says when he talks to Mary or Martha, he doesn't tell Martha that I can resurrect Lazarus. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. You see, Martha was looking for an event. Jesus was saying, resurrection isn't an event. Resurrection is a person. And that person is Christ. Listen to me. You might have seen your marriage die. You might see your dreams die. You might see your hopes die. Your ministry may have died. There's some things that, are, that you've given up on. I'm here to tell you that Jesus isn't just into resurrecting those things. He is resurrection. When Jesus steps in, he brings life to those things. Jesus specializes in resurrecting marriages, dreams, hopes, Futures, careers, God specializes in resurrecting bodies and nations. I believe America is on the verge of seeing one of the greatest resurrections that we've ever seen before. I'm here to prophesy to you that God is about to breathe over this land, that God is about to bring a revival over our land here in San Jose, here in Northern California, in California as well, and over the whole United States and across the globe. I believe that there is going to be a move of God that is going to shape nations. Oh, come on, somebody. You're looking at a nation. We look at California and think that it's spiritually dead. I'm prophesying right now that God is going to call California out from the grave. And just like Lazarus, we're going to rise again. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. As Jesus stands there, as I get ready to close, Jesus says, take away the stone. You see, what I love about God God's not going to give us something that is useless. What good is it to raise Lazarus from the dead but have him locked behind a stone? See, God prepares a way out before he raises you up. Okay. Come on, say it again, Pastor. God prepares a way out before he raises you up. He's not going to raise you up in the dark and leave you in that grave. He already made a way for him to exit. And so when he calls out, he stands at the grave. The Bible says he weeps. Some people said he wept, he wept because he loved Lazarus. I believe he wept because he knew this simple thing is that, you know what? People still won't believe in who I am even after I raise someone from the dead. Yet Jesus still did so. What, what's a trip is this? I heard E.V. Hill, old, old minister years ago, talk about that Lazarus, after four days, the Jewish people believed that there was no hope of resurrection because after four days, decay set in. There's some of you that have been divorced so long that decay has set into that relationship. You've been estranged from your family that decay is set in. You've been separated from your career or your, your, your sobriety that decay is set in. But the very moment Jesus called out Lazarus to come forth, every maggot that had eaten away at Lazarus' body, all the decomposed material of his body, the moment Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth, those worms had to give back everything they had taken. And the body had to be restored to its perfect condition. You see, when God calls you out, come on, somebody. When, when the life, the resurrection and the life calls you out of the grave, he doesn't call you out so you could be on life support system or have you moving around in a wheelchair. It would have been a great miracle after four days to have Lazarus have a pulse. But Jesus didn't rise you so you could have a pulse. He said in John 10, 10, I've come that you might have life and life abundantly. If you're not experiencing abundant life, then you haven't experienced Jesus because Jesus is still life. He's still life. There's hope right now for you. In the midst of corona, in the midst of all the things that are going on, I speak 
life. Right where you are, I speak life. I speak life over your marriage. I speak life over your, your mind. I speak life over your heart. I speak life over your family. I speak life over those things that you've given up on. Those things that have begun to decay, fall apart, and begin to smell. God's calling those things out. The same voice that called Lazarus from the grave is calling you out right now. Can you hear him? Come on, can you hear him? The Holy Spirit of God is calling you out. Listen as I close. As Jesus was on the cross and he breathes his final breath and he says, Father, into thy hands do I commit my spirit. As he breathed his last breath, capture, capture this. Only the book of John points this out. That when he breathes his final breath, that the graves of godly people were opened and they were resurrected. Read it. That when Jesus said, into your hands I commit my spirit, and he dies, he breathes his last breath, all of a sudden, those that had no breath that were godly were given breath back again. Oh, come on. You got to capture this. And they stay in their tombs. They stay there until the resurrection of Jesus. Now, why, I don't know, but they stay there. I'm here to tell you this. The very fact that Jesus gave up his breath for us was the very fact that we can now breathe again. He gave up his breath so that you and I could breathe. Trying to remove the obstacles. Some preachers say that Jesus called Lazarus out by name because if he had just said, Come forth in a graveyard, every dead person would have come out. And so he had to be specific. And I'm here to tell you right now, Jesus is calling your name. He is still the resurrection and the life. This morning, we're going to take communion. And I'm going to ask you if you have your elements for communion just to prepare yourselves right now. Those that were in our parking lot service last week, we took communion. But we're going to do it again. Why? Because the Bible says as often as you do it. Not just on the first Sunday of the month. You can take communion every day. But as we take communion, we re recognize before Jesus gave his life, he took bread and he broke it and said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this as often as you do it in remembrance of me. As we take the bread, I want you to take the bread in faith and hope and recognizing that Jesus is calling you out of your grave right now. Take the bread. Father, we bless your name. Father, the same voice that called Lazarus out of the grave is calling us out of fear, depression, and discouragement. Lord, I thank you right now that we're coming out. Father, we're coming out. We're coming out of this. We're coming out, my God. We're coming out of this. Lord, the stones rolled away. We're coming out of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Then he took the cup. He said, this is the blood of the new covenant of my blood. Jesus made a new covenant for us. He fulfilled the first one by dying. The first will was fulfilled. He says, now I have a better one for you. See, my blood that was shed is going to give you a new relationship with the Father so that the Holy Spirit could breathe in you again. The same way breath was going to come back into the lungs of, of Lazarus who had been dead for four days. The blood of Jesus made a way for you and I now to have the Holy Spirit breathe in us. Take the cup this morning. Thank you, Jesus. You are still the resurrection and the life. right where you are. You know, if you've accepted Christ, if you were to die right now, where would you go? 
Come on, if you know Christ as your Lord and Savior and you were to die right now, where would you go? Heaven, right? Paul said, for me to live is Christ, to die is gain. And many of us are walking around so fearful of, of corona and sicknesses and death. I need you to understand, if we die, this earth is only temporary. This is not the end. This earth is, is just a training ground for eternity. The decisions we make here determine where we spend eternity. So if we die, I get to spend my eternity with Jesus. I win. Death is not an end. It's a promotion. And so if I, if I die here, Jesus, his death and resurrection on the cross made, took away the sting of death. If you die, you spend eternity with Christ. We win in the end. So death is nothing to be fearful of. When my daughter died, it just made heaven much more of a real place. I can't wait to get there to see her. But until that time, for me to live is Christ, as long as I'm here on earth, I'm going to give my all to Jesus. Why? Because he gave his final breath for me. He is still, come on, someone say still. Jesus is still the resurrection and the life. He is still the only one that gives us life and gives purpose to life. He is still the only one that can resurrect your dreams, your family, your future, and your hope. He is still life. Bow your heads with me as we close. Father, I pray for every person within the sound of my voice. Lord, if they've given up, if they feel like like Lazarus, they're decaying in despair. That, Lord, that you would just whisper our names today in Jesus' name. If you're here and you don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior, I just want you right now in this moment just to say this prayer with me. Say, Heavenly Father, I receive you now as Lord and Savior. Resurrect me like you did Lazarus because you died on the cross and rose again three days later I too can live I make a choice today to follow you to commit my life to you you gave up your breath let me use my final breath to honor you in Jesus name we pray amen if you said that prayer, I want you to text the word ALIVE to the number on the screen. I want you to text that number. We'll get back to you so we can help you on this new walk in Christ. You see, when Jesus called Lazarus out of the grave, the Bible says he shows up at the entrance of the tomb very slowly because he was wrapped up like a mummy. He couldn't move. He came out, and Jesus says this, Loose the man. And let him go. In other words, it's time to take off the grave clothes. As we close today, I'm here to tell you, Jesus doesn't just come to give you life. He came to set you free. And so you might be alive right now, but you might be locked down by the grave clothes, the yesterday, the failures of yesterday. I'm here to tell you, Jesus wants to set you free. No longer walking around in bondage anymore. You are created to be free because Jesus is still the resurrection and the life. God bless you this morning. We love you. Remember, CWC, Christian Worship Center Bay Area, love God, love people, and let's change the world. God bless you this morning. Thank you, Pastor Dan, for that amazing work. We appreciate you. Don't forget to follow us on all of our social medias. Have a great Sunday. Christ in me is more than enough, more than enough, because my